Hello everyone, my name is John, and today I'm going to be walking you through Crusader Kings 2, uh, because I think a lot of people find this game pretty intimidating, and its tutorial is not the best tutorial in the world. Alright, so I'm going to devote an entire episode just to the character creation, uh, character selection screen, because it is a complicated screen, as you can see. Uh, the game is epic in scope, and it ranges from Sri Lanka down in the southeast to Iceland up in the northwest. Kind of want to play uh, a count in Iceland uh, just because that would be insanely difficult. But I'm not going to. Uh, instead, let us take a look at the different map modes to decide which, uh, which character we want to play. Okay. So the first map mode is the terrain map mode. It's pretty. It shows you uh, the different terrain, you know, de deserts and uh, forests, mountains, and the like. But it is not particularly informative. It doesn't really help you come to a decision. Unless, you know, terrain is a real uh, factor in what you want to play. It's like, I want to play a desert guy, so I'll... Uh, play the Count of Dofar, uh, or Shake of Dofar, I should say. But I'm guessing that's not how most people make their decisions. So instead, let's look at the independent realms. Uh, these, this is a map of every realm that is ruled independently. Um, if you pick one of these realms, you will be in charge of your kingdom. Uh, so, you know, I can play the Umayyad, uh, uh, Sultanate, or uh, the uh, County of Desmond. Uh, they're not balanced against each other. Some of these realms are really powerful, and some of them are really weak. Uh, but uh, if you have an idea about where and uh, what level of power you want to play, uh, this uh, map can be pretty handy. Um, if not, then uh, you'll have to uh, go to a different map. Like, this one here, the count map. Uh, this shows all of the counts, uh, people who have exactly, uh, whose highest title is count. Uh, some counts are more powerful than others in that they control uh, more than one county. Uh, here's an example of that. Uh, the Sheikh of Orania controls uh, both of these counties here. Um, now, sh uh, counts or sheikhs, as the Muslim version is called, uh, generally swear fealty to a more powerful lord. Uh, some of these are independent, uh, most of the ones in Ireland, for example, uh, but uh, a lot of them are subordinate, like these ones here in France. Um, being a count is an interesting challenge because you've really got to work your way up. Uh, the general recommended uh, starting power level would probably be Duke. Uh, Dukes have who are people whose highest title is Duke, of course, um, and they can be independent or vassals just like counts, um, but an independent Duke is probably uh, the, the smallest independent realm that really has a chance of making it. Um, Dukes also vary in power. Uh, you've got powerful ones like uh, Badajoz here, uh, which controls what looks like eight or nine counties. Uh, and then you've got small, uh, weak ones like Tara here, which controls one county. Um, Aragorn is another one county one. Um, then the next level up is Kings. Kings have a lot of authority to pass laws in their country and are generally uh, fairly satisfying characters to play, but they have some difficulties too, uh, which is that um, they usually have a lot of vassals uh, to, to manage. Uh, managing vassals is an important part of the game, but not necessarily something that you're going to want to see right when you're first getting started. Um, of course, that's not true for all kingdoms. Like, a kingdom, as long as it has at least one county in it, uh, 
can theoretically exist. See, Navarra here, it's got two counties. Uh, one of them that is controlled by the king, and uh, one of them which is controlled by the Duke of Aragorn here. See, so uh, if we wanted to really get the full kingdom experience at the start, Navarra might be a good one to play, although, as you can see, it's uh, squished between three other powerful kingdoms here, uh, Asturias, Aquantine, and Andalusia. Um, now, if we really wanted to be uh, super powerful and complex at the start, we could also theoretically play an emperor, like the Byzantine Empire. Uh, they don't get a special map uh, because, uh, well, emperors are pretty rare at the beginning. I think only the Byzantine Empire exists in the uh, in the ten or in the eight sixty seven start. Um, oh wait, no, the Caliphate, uh, the Abbasid Caliphate exists as well. All right. Other things we can do if you don't like. Um, the particular political situation is you can advance the start date. Uh, 867 is the earliest start, um, but you could go up to uh, 1066, which is a bit more familiar perhaps. Uh, Iberia is fractured, but France and England exist. Um, or you could go um, to like the Mongol invasion of Europe if you wanted to play as the Mongols. Not sure. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, and as late as the Hundred Year War, which in terms of this game is practically modern. Okay, I'm going to start in 867, uh, and I think that I want to play uh, the King of Navarra. It's pretty difficult to actually get a king title in such a small realm. Uh, one thing that you can do Oh, there's a couple of map modes I forgot to show you. Uh, religion, uh, and each of the religions has different gameplay effects. You know, you've got Catholics dominating Europe, uh, and you still got a lot of pagans in the 867 start. Uh, and then you've got Muslims here in the south. Um, each of the religions has different gameplay effects, uh, different casus belli, and um, inheritance laws. Uh, so, they're not, I think that they're generally supposed to be balanced against each other, and no one religion is the best, uh, just like real life, but um, they do have different styles. Catholics have generally stricter casus belli, uh, but they have a wider variety of inheritance laws available to start. Uh, Norse can pretty much declare war on anyone, uh, but uh, they... Uh, do not have very good inheritance laws. Their realms uh, fall apart easily. Um, the various pagans are somewhere in between. Um, Muslims are pretty powerful to play because their inheritance laws not insane, and, and but they do have uh, some pretty good casus belli. Um, and of course, because this is Crusader Kings, uh, one universal casus belli is holy war. So if you play on the border here, uh, declaring war on a rival kingdom with a different religion is always allowed. Um, but like I said, I think I want to play uh, the kingdom of Navarra, and this map, uh, the culture map, will just show you why. Um, culture doesn't have a huge effect on how the game is played. Um, you get uh, specific uh, cultural units, like special units, based on your culture. Um, but other than that, its main effect is diplomatic. Um, it's easier to rule over uh, counties that share your culture, and it's harder to rule over counties that are different culture. So one thing that you would want to look at is um, widespread cultures, like uh, you can play a small starting state here in uh, the Levantine culture, but if you ever expanded your empire, it would be much more stable. Uh, Basques is a pretty small culture, but they get a special ability, which I think is pretty handy. Uh, and that is that they have uh, 
are one of the few with access to equitable gender inheritance laws. And so uh, I've never really played as a Basque in this game before. Uh, but the notion that uh, I don't have to work so hard to uh, get queens on the throne, and thus I'm not wasting half of my children, does kind of appeal to me. Uh, that's another thing about this game. Uh, once you play it for a while, it, you gain a certain pragmatism on um, political factors that would not be very appropriate today. Of course, the way I usually play is choose a random character. But um, to do that in, uh, in a demonstration game probably be pretty irresponsible. But yeah. Like, it'll just take you all over the map. So we are going to play as the King of Navarra, starting with our next episode. Uh, so have a nice day.